Welcome to Talent Hub Talk. I am Ben Duncan, and this is a place where prominent and inspirational figures from both the local ANZ and global Salesforce Ohana share their stories. Welcome back to Talent Hub Talk. Today, I am going to go over some of the common mistakes that I see Salesforce professionals making in interviews, or or, um, I would say more accurately, some of the common mistakes I hear about Salesforce professionals making in interviews. And this is often um, through feedback from hiring managers. Now, some of these aren't all that specific to the Salesforce industry, and they're they're quite common across um, all interviews, but some of them are also specific to Salesforce. So yeah, hopefully by listening to this, you might assess where some of your interviews may have gone wrong in the past or kind of review how you prepare and and deliver your input into Salesforce interviews. And uh, and maybe you may learn something here that might be uh, a little tweak you make to how you do things for interviews and which hopefully would result in better outcomes for your interviews. So even if there's just one little takeaway from this podcast, um, hopefully it'll be useful for you for future interviews. And yeah, please do let me know if you find this interesting. So the first one I am going to mention is not properly researching uh, and preparing for the interview. So, you know, a lot of people I speak to when they're just getting ready to go for an interview, I'll ask them what what kind of research they've done. And, you know, most people uh, will have just looked at the company's website um, and just kind of got familiar with with what the business does. And I really think it's important to go a bit deeper. So um, my advice would be obviously, yes, read the website and look on LinkedIn, look at recent announcements on LinkedIn in from the company, look at the the, the different people within the business, um, you know, the different roles, different responsibilities, how long Salesforce professionals have been in the team, you know, what kind of turnover they've had. So have there been Salesforce professionals in the team that have left recently? Um, is that a common theme? You know, have they had really good retention? Have they had Salesforce professionals been that, that have been in the company for you know, many years, which is always a good sign? But also looking at different like potential use cases of Salesforce for the business. So it's really important that, you know, as an example, if you're interviewing with a bank, you don't just know that they're a financial services company and um, you try to understand who their customers are as well. Um, you know, is it business banking? Is it private banking? Um, is it a retail bank? Um, try to look at different ways that they potentially could use Salesforce as a, a, a platform internally. And are they using it to, to service their customers? Do they have experience cloud? All of these preparing, you know, that, that will help with your answers for when you're asked particular questions for in the interview. I think it's also important that, you know, you, you do build this kind of potential understanding of how they use Salesforce, but then also question that in the interview to make sure that your understanding is correct. But you, you really do need to know more than just what the, the business does. Um, you need to have done more than just look at their website. And uh, the worst the worst feedback I get is if anyone ever um, goes for an interview and they can't explain what the business does. So um, often hiring managers will say, you know, what's your understanding of our business? Um, what do you think we do? Uh, why do you want to work here? Things like that. And if someone can't answer those questions, that's, that's really not great. Um, I think it's really difficult to come back in an interview if you can't answer those kind of questions. So, so yeah, really go a bit deeper. Don't just look at the website. Website, look at the team, look at, um, think about different use cases for Salesforce, um, really, really start to build a picture out of that company. And, and so you can actually really confidently answer why you'd want to work there. You know, um, the, the turnover is really low. Great point. You know, you want to work in a team that's been around for a while. You, you, d- you don't want to work for a, in a team that's constantly having turnover. You know, you, you you, your assessment would be that they've um, they've invested heavily in Salesforce because of the size of the team, things like that. Um, you can only really do if you do good thorough research. A lot of this information you can get from the recruiter that you work with if you do work with a recruiter, but all, don't just rely on, on that information. Do your own research as well. So yeah, that's the first one, not properly researching the company. Um, that's, a, that's a big error. The next one is not familiarizing yourself or themselves with their own CV. I think people write their CVs when they're looking for, for work and they often just write the last job into their CV. They don't go back over old ground and look at, you know, what they've said in the past, what they've, they've said they've done, what they've worked on. Because obviously when, when you are interviewing with someone, it's very likely they're going to have your CV in front of them. Um, so they'll be referring to their C, your CV, sorry, when, when they're asking you questions. Um, and if you don't know your own CV yourself, you can't point them in the right direction, you know, refer back to old pieces of work you've done that are relevant. Um, highlight things that that they're asking you about. 
So, you know, if, if they're asking you about your experience with Service Cloud, you can say, look, if you look back at my CV, uh, I worked on a government project between 2018 and 2020, which was exclusively Service Cloud. Here I delivered X, Y, Z, and some of my achievements were X. So, yeah, it's really important that you know your CV, you know what you've done where, when you did it, and uh, and you can refer back to that and point the, the hiring manager in the right direction. Um, it's also really important that you read back through your CV um, regularly, and not just ahead of interviews, but it shouldn't just be a, a copy and paste from a job description that you've had in the past. Um, you know, it's really important that you highlight your achievements from each role. And if you are looking for some advice around writing a resume, then go on our website. There's uh, there's a blog on there that, uh, that I often point people in the direction of that. I think is really useful. Another one that comes up quite regularly um, is uh, is that candidates and job seekers um, sometimes speak in the we rather than the I. This is a contentious one because I personally believe that hiring managers should, you know, maybe give you a, a, a bit of a, a nudge if, if you are doing this in an interview and maybe let you know that you're doing it and ask that you to be more specific around the tasks that you've delivered and the achievements that you have had. I'm not a fan uh, when, when hiring managers let the whole interview run and then provide feedback that you were doing that throughout the interview because I think, um, you know, sometimes that's just how people do communicate, but it is something to be aware of. So rather than if you're asked a question around, um, tell me about a flow that you've built. Some people do answer that in, well, at you know, company Y, we worked on migrating process builders to flows and we didn't use the, the migration um, toolkit. We, we built them from scratch. And what they should actually be saying is um, at company Y, I built several flows um, migrating from process builders to flows and building them from scratch. The way that I did this was X, Y, Z, and the outcome for the business was, and then, uh, you know, really go into detail around that. Don't lie. If you didn't do it, don't say that you did, but, um, but just make sure that you are really being clear on, on what you did and, and what your responsibilities and achievements were. Um, because if you do speak in the we, often hiring managers perceive that as you not being the, the sole person delivering that or, you know, only having a, a small element of that responsibility and not taking full responsibility for that task. So often they, they feel that you didn't do that yourself. It was just part of a team. And even if you, you did do it yourself, if you speak in the we, sometimes presents as, as you didn't. So yeah, really be aware of that and try not to do it as best as you can. And, and that's something that a lot of hiring managers do look out for. Another mistake is not taking notes. I think uh, if you if you go to a meeting with someone, um, you know, not a job interview, but just a meeting, you typically would take a, a notepad and, and make notes around what's being said. And I think a lot of hiring managers do like it when you do that in interviews. It shows that you're interested. You know, it shows that you've got things to refer back to in the future. And yeah, I think it's just a, a good practice. It, it's it's professional. Um, they're going to make notes about what you say. And I think it's it's good for you to make notes about what they say and the answers they provide to the, the questions that you have. So yeah, I just think it's a good professional thing to do. And uh, in the past, when, when people haven't done that, I have had hiring managers comment on the fact that, you know, you, you didn't come with a, a notepad or pen, um, even for a video interview, um, didn't look like you were interested, didn't make any notes. Um, so definitely something to consider if you're not doing that. This one um, is specific to the, the Salesforce ecosystem, and, and I see quite a lot of um, Salesforce administrators falling for, for this one. And it's, it's a question that comes up regularly in Salesforce interviews, and, and like I said, probably most uh, specifically in the admin interview. But I see a lot of hiring managers asking people about the most recent Salesforce release notes. So the question can sometimes be, you know, what was your favorite thing from the most recent Salesforce release notes? You know, what, what, what was your take on the most recent re release notes? How far through the release notes are you? Things like that, just to, to see if you actually read them. Now, it's not for me to say whether or not you should read them. I, I think you, you can make your own call on that. But it's something that I have seen hiring managers feel that people aren't up to date if they're not reading them. So, uh, and, you know, in a lot of cases can, can be important to businesses that the Salesforce administrator is across the, the latest releases and being thorough and, um, and, and collecting different ideas and, and ways of doing things. So that comes up a lot. Just make sure if you are interviewing at the moment, you are across the most recent release notes and make some notes that, that, that you can maybe take into an interview in case that comes up so that you're just able to talk about, you know, what what you, you took from them and what you'll be maybe looking to implement in your next role or your current role, just to have a discussion around release notes, because that, that often does come up. And uh, if you haven't read them, sometimes that's looked upon unfavorably. The next one is uh, not giving enough detail to answers. 
So this is, again, quite common. People are asked a question. Again, I'll give the example of talk me through a flow that you've built. And, and some people just don't give enough detail. So, you know, they might say, in my last company, I built a screen flow and that's it. That m might sound like quite a shocking example, but believe me, it does happen. And um, that's just not enough detail. Um, you know, you really need to explain what the, the requirement was, um, what you built, how you built it, why you built it that way, what the outcome was, what the achievement, um, you know, what, what that achieved for the business. Um, there, there's lots of different frameworks for answering questions. There's the STAR um, technique, which I think you, you should research um, if, if you don't have any kind of structure to the way that you answer interview questions. Um, that, that's definitely something to, to look into. But yeah, just, just make sure you're putting enough meat on the bone for, for the person to to be able to really make a, an assessment of, of what you did, how you did it, why you did it, to make sure that you can articulate, you know, what the different options were and why you went down that route. Just really talk about the achievements, you know, make sure that you're being really clear with not just what you did, but the outcome and, and you know, the business achievement that that resulted in, because really that's what hiring managers are often looking for. So uh, yeah, really important to give plenty of detail. But the next point is giving too much detail and probably detail is the wrong word for this, but going you know too broad so talking for too long not being specific enough it's really important that you you make sure you are answering the question that you're being asked and in a lot of cases i get feedback that you know someone's gone off on a tangent um they haven't answered the question but they've given you know an answer a long answer to, to something completely off off grid um not that was asked and um and yeah really that that doesn't come across well to the hiring manager so make sure you are answering the question make sure your answer is detailed but don't talk for for too long on one topic um make sure it is you know in line with what the person is asking and uh, don't waffle on for too long just you know an interview is is a, a an opportunity to show and showcase and talk about what you know but it's also an opportunity to show that you can listen so make sure you are listening make sure that it is a two-way conversation and not just you saying everything the next one is not highlighting achievements. And I've kind of touched on this throughout, but it really is important that, you know, you can articulate what you've achieved, not just what you did day to day, but what you actually achieved in your previous roles. So it might be worth, you know, when you are preparing for an interview next to each job on your CV, although achievement should be in your CV as well, but make sure you are kind of noting down a couple of things that you would want to talk about from that role. Um, so that when there are questions come up, you can refer, refer back to that and, um, and give, give some really insightful, um, achievements and, and some real selling points, I think, because ultimately you are trying to sell your experience and what you've done in the past to the hiring manager. So yeah, make sure that you can confidently articulate what you've achieved in a couple of different roles or all of your roles and, um, and be confident around that delivery. And then the final one is um, not preparing questions, which um, I, I recently released a, a podcast on for anyone that struggles with answering questions or sorry, asking questions in an interview. Go back and listen to that one because, you know, that's often at the end of the interview, you're given a chance to ask interview questions um, and, and direct them to the different people involved. Uh, and unfortunately, some people don't prepare any questions or don't think of any questions through the interview. And that com can come across really poorly at the end of an interview if you've got nothing to say. Um, so preparing questions is, is really important. Uh, make sure they're uh, they're detailed, they're, they're specific to this company. Um, they're not just fluffy questions that everyone kind of um, asks at the end of interviews, that they're, they're kind of, they're going to give you some real good insight on that business, that hiring manager, the role, um, the, the future of the role, the future opportunities, things like that. So if you're struggling with questions for interviews, make sure you uh, you go back and listen to that previous episode. So yeah, they're just some things that that come up often. You may be making one of them you uh, as a as a mistake. You may be making multiple, but uh, just a couple of things to think about so that when you are preparing for an interview and in an interview, you um you you can put your best foot forward and and kind of have the best opportunity to secure that role. So. If you have any further questions, please do reach out. Happy to answer them. Happy to help in any way I can. And uh, good luck with future interviews. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the chat. And if you did, please make sure you have subscribed for future episodes that are coming through. I would also be very grateful if you would consider leaving a review on your chosen podcast platform, as five-star reviews will help us to reach more trailblazers from across the world. I look forward to sharing another episode with you soon. And thanks again.